Upon first entering the TARDIS, Amy Hyper actively questioned the doctor about its nature and his, whether the doctor was really, a little slug in a human suit, what police boxes were, and if the TARDIS's rooflight ever needed changing. Quickly tiring of her questions, the doctor threw Amy into an atmospheric bubble beyond the TARDIS, to float weightlessly in space. Amy's first trip in the TARDIS took her to Starship UK in the 33rd century. It was secretly propelled by a star whale who was tortured to keep the ship moving. Amy freed it, and it continued to pilot the ship because it was kind-hearted. In the process, Amy met the future British monarch, Queen Elizabeth X. She was amused by being recognized and accepted by government computers as a 1,306-year-old British subject and eligible voter but concerned by her marital status being unknown. Heeding a call for help, they went to war-torn London in 1941 to meet Winston Churchill, who was using Daleks to help in the war, believing them to be drones created by Dr. Edwin Bracewell. When the doctor tried having her tell Churchill about their true nature, Amy had no answers for him despite having lived through the Battle of Canary Wharf and the 2009 Dalek invasion, something that left him shocked and confused. After the Daleks tricked the doctor into helping facilitate the rebirth of their race, they escaped through time. Amy helped deactivate the Oblivion Continuum inside Bracewell by convincing him he was human. Then the doctor and Amy found the Daleks had destroyed the human race in 1963, using the Eye of Time to alter history. They went through the eye to Scarrow before the Daleks arrived. Amy began disappearing. She used this condition to collect parts for the doctor to build a vision disruptor and sneaked by the Daleks to set it to blind them as they arrived. The doctor overloaded the magnetic field generators. The Daleks lost the eye and never used it to alter history. Game, City of the Daleks, the doctor and Amy arrived in GSO Arctic Drilling Station. A nanovirus spread by cybermats had turned the crew into cyberslaves to recover cybermen trapped beneath the ice millennia before. Amy used a reprogrammed distress beacon to disable the cybermats. The cyberslaves captured Amy and nearly converted her, but the doctor rescued her and defeated them. Game, Blood of the Cybermen. Amy next ended up on a rubbish asteroid called the Gyre far into her relative future, which was to be destroyed by a nanobomb. She befriended the Situn Charlie and saved the Doctor from the devolved descendants of humans stranded there centuries before. The Doctor next took her back to June 2010, in New York City, for the best burgers in all history, buying the street they were sold on in her name to get them for free. She wanted to shop with the psychic paper instead. However, this plan was derailed when she had to save him and all Manhattan from being kidnapped by tiny aliens known as the Vicoids. She was remembered by them as the reason they failed in their mission. Amy and the Doctor visited the skeleton people and the Doctor freed them from the Toad King's rule. Amy could not understand why they were angry with him for saving them, but the Doctor theorized it was because he took their, squiggly what's it. They next went to a museum in the 171st century, where they found the Byzantium's home box with a message, Hello, sweetie, in high Gallifreyan, cut into its case with a torch. They traveled to a space-time point in the 51st century adjacent to the Byzantium and opened the TARDIS doors just as River Song blew herself out of the doomed ship. The doctor introduced the two women, neither he nor Amy being aware that River was both Amy's future daughter Melody and her lifelong friend, Mel's. When at one point she was left alone, a video recording of Angel Bob came to life and nearly escaped out of the television. Although Amy neutralized it in time by pausing it on a blip, she looked into its eyes for too long, her eyes becoming infected by a mental image of the angel. All three proceeded to the Byzantium's wreckage on Alfeva Metraxis to help the church defeat an army of weeping angels aboard the ship, which had been awakened by the crashed ship's engines. While traveling through the wreckage, Amy started counting down from ten, although was initially unaware she was doing so, this, in fact, being the angel. To prevent it from killing her, she was forced to keep her eyes shut. Although all of the church's men were soon either killed or erased from time by the time cracks that appeared, the angels were all eventually sucked into the time cracks themselves when the artificial gravity was disabled, erasing the mental image of the angel from her eyes and temporarily closing the cracks. However, she was left shaken by her close encounter with death. While her angel-infected eyes were required to be closed, the doctor returned to her and admonished her to remember what he told when she was seven. This incarnation of the doctor was from weeks or months into her relative future. 
After this trauma, Amy told the doctor she wanted to go home and was getting married. They arrived on the night of the 25th of June 2010, minutes before midnight. She aggressively attempted to seduce the doctor. The doctor resisted her sexual demands and pushed her back into his TARDIS just at the stroke of midnight. Amy protested that he was a bloke who flirted with all of the ladies and laughed at all the men in each room he entered. He explained his compulsion to travel with companions stemmed from his lost ability to marvel at the universe and that he took companions in order to experience the wonders vicariously through them. Wondering how many other women had traveled with the doctor, Amy tricked him into unlocking the visual records, something that was amusing to her as he lied about the number of women companions. This forced the doctor to collect Rory from his stag party. Amy and the doctor flew the TARDIS a few hours back in time to collect Rory from his stag night. As a wedding gift, the doctor took them to romantic Venice in 1580 as traveling with him and returning to normal lives ruins relationships, in the hopes that this would repair theirs. They discovered vampires, who were, in fact, Saturnins attempting to repopulate their species by transforming human girls into compatible mates for the sons of Rosanna Calvieri. After barely escaping conversion herself, Amy rescued Rory from Rosanna's eldest son, Francesco, killing for the first time. The TARDIS crew was trapped between two worlds by the Dream Lord. He taunted Amy about her confused relationship with the Doctor and Rory, forcing her to choose between them. When Rory died in one dream, she realized that she did not wish to live without him. On finding him alive in reality, she made it clear to him for the first time that his feelings were fully reciprocated. Intending to visit Rio, Amy and Rory instead arrived in Cumtaf, Wales in 2020, where she was nearly dissected by the Silurian scientist Maloka. After an aborted attempt to form an alliance between humans and the Silurians, during which Amy spoke for mankind, the Silurian leader Eldane fumigated the city with a gas to stop the military forces led by Restack from attacking humanity. The troops were forced to return to the cryostasis pods to hibernate for a thousand years. Rory was killed with a shot intended for the doctor by Restack and erased from reality by another of the cracks in space and time. Amy lost all of her memories of him, 